Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be starting off a new series where I go over an entire IB biology topic, just all the syllabus points in the syllabus guide. So here I found the IB biology syllabus from this website called www.biologyforlife.com. They give a lot of IB biology resources. So as part of our first video, I'm going to be going over topic one cell biology and I'm going to go through 1.1 to 1.6. So in the first understanding right here, we have the idea that all living organisms are composed of cells. That literally means that anything that's living has to have cells and anything that doesn't have cells is not living. And also, this is part of cell theory. The other two postulates of cell theory are that the cell is the smallest unit of life and all cells come from pre-existing cells. Next is this idea that unicellular organisms carry out all the functions of life. So what are the functions of life? The functions of life are really tie in with this mnemonic, Mr. Sheng, which stands for metabolism, reproduction, sensitivity, homeostasis, excretion, nutrition, and growth. And when it comes to these, um, these, these functions of life, we have, to, um, we have to draw and label diagrams with paramecium and a photosynthetic organism. Next, we need to know about cell surface area to volume ratio, which is a ratio that actually decreases as size increases. We actually need this ratio to be higher than um, higher rather than lower. So this is why cells are quite small instead of growing too large. Next, we need to know that multicellular organisms like humans have properties that emerge due to the interaction of cellular components. That means that together, multiple cells can work and carry out functions that individual cells cannot. We call these emergent properties. Next, specialized tissue can develop by cell differentiation in multicellular organisms. organisms. So tissues are groups of uh, regions where the same type of cell are grouped together to carry out the same function. So like muscle tissue. So differentiation is when certain genes in the genome are expressed but not others. And all cells in an organism have the same genome, but the expression of the genes makes sure that some cells develop certain characteristics while others develop other ones so that they're more suited for their function. Stem cells are cells that can divide and differentiate endlessly and this makes them really good for replacing damaged cells that do not self-replicate and heal. This is true for neurons. As I mentioned earlier, the cell theory postulates, there are actually three different um, exceptions that you need to know. Striated muscle, which is because it's multinucleated, giant algae, which is huge, and aseptate fungal hyphae, which challenges that um, the cell is a single unit of life. Next, you need to know about Stargardt's disease, which is Called, sometimes called Stargardt's macular dystrophy, and it occurs in the in the eyes and the retina where where vision is lost, and you need these retina cells to be replaced by stem cells. Another condition you can remember is Huntington's disease with neurons or leukemia with a bone marrow. Next, you need to consider the ethics of using stem cells, so you can think about the costs involved and whether you're killing um, newborns and um, etc. Finally, you need to know about light microscopes, and this is just knowing um, how to label microscope images. Just get used to it, and also learn the structure where it's called where the image size equals the actual size times the magnitude, um, and that's how you um, that's the formula you use for working out each one from a calculation. Let's move on to topic one point two. First point is that prokaryotic cells have a simple cell structure without compartmentalization. That just means they don't have membrane-bound organelles. For example, they have um, prokaryotic cells may have their nuclear plasmids as well, and their nucleoid region, of course, does not have a membrane. Eukaryotes do have compartmentalization and membrane-bound organelles. That's literally in the definition of a eukaryote. And electron microscopes have a higher resolution than light microscopes because the wavelength of electrons is much shorter. Next, in a application point one, you need to know how to label an exocrine gland cell in a pancreas, and that's like the exocrine granules, and just the general structure of a cell, and also palisade mesophyll cells, which is just a plant cell that has chloroplast. Next point is that binary fission is the method of division by prokaryotes. Essentially, the nuclear re nucleoid region is duplicated, then the cell elongates, splits off, and you have two exact copies of the parent cell. Here we have the main skills involved, which is just to draw the prokaryotic and the um, eukaryotic cells under microscopes, and you just need to know how to label the um, parts as well, so just get familiar with that. Next, you're going to also have to identify what type of cell something is based on the organelles. So, if, like I said earlier, if there are lots of 
uh, secretory granule cells, you could say that it's a pancreatic cell with the role of secreting some hormone or uh, nutrient or enzyme. Moving on to 1.3, this is all about the membrane, cell membrane. Phospholipids are the individual amphipathic structures that are the that make up uh, the plasma membrane. So phospholipids are amphipathic, meaning that they have both hydrophobic and hydrophilic components, a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. So two hydrophobic tails. And what happens is they organize themselves like this. The hydrophobic tails form inwards and the hydrophilic um, heads form outwards. Next, we need to know that according to the fluid mosaic model, there are lots of membranes that are embedded in the embedded in the plasma membrane and these very proteins have different functions like ATP synthase, sodium potassium pumps, just to name a few. Next we also need to know that it's not just proteins but cholesterol is actually inside the membranes as well and this acts as a medium mediator of fluidity and permeability. So again it reduces membrane fluidity and permeability to some substances because perm because cholesterol is a non-polar molecule like a fat which is um, which does not dissolve in water, and that prevents um, other non-polar stuff from going through, or polar stuff from going through. Next, you need to draw the fluid mosaic model. Just the just make sure you label as well as you draw, because that's generally how you get mark points in IB. The main evidence for um, the proposal of Davs and Danielli is electron microscopy that showed like a sandwich layer. So you had a really dark layer of membrane, really dark layer, and a bit of light layer. And dark proteins appear darker on the electron microscope. So what people thought was that, according to it's meant to say Davson, but um, there's a sandwich. It's like a sandwich of the phospholipids on the inside and proteins on the outside. But after that, we actually falsified that using uh, fluorescent antibody tagging, freeze fracturing, and other techniques. And we got the Singer-Nicholson model, which is called the fluid mosaic model. Now that we learned about the membrane, we've got to learn about how substances move across membranes. So there's three, there's like four main ways. There's active transport, simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, osmosis. Osmosis is the diffusion of water across a membrane, per partially permeable membrane. Facilitated diffusion is diffusion with the help of a membrane protein. Simple diffusion is just from high concentration to low concentration. Active transport is using energy to move substances and um, yeah, so the, what needs to be known is that a per, partially permeable membrane is needed for these activities to occur. And that's permeability, but we also talk about fluidity because that's what allows endo and exocytosis. As the name suggests, endocytosis, movement into the cell, exocytosis, movement out of the cell. And vesicles inside cells actually contain materials that they're going to um, move out of cells or move into cells. So they essentially have phospholipids as well, and these vesicles can... Um, can bond with the plasma membrane itself because it's fluid and then move substances out. They essentially become part of the membrane so that they fuse and then move the substances in or out. Next, you need to know about sodium potassium pumps, but I generally leave this point till later because you're going to cover it anyways in like topic 6.5. Next, we need to know that there are two types of solutions, three actually, hypertonic, hypertonic, and isotonic. Isotonic means same osmolarity inside and outside. And um, isoto uh, hypertonic means a higher osmolar osmolarity, and hypertonic means a lower osmolarity. So osmolarity is about the concentration of the substance in water, and the high if something is hypertonic, that means it attracts water, because water is less in a more con solid concentrated environment. At a hypotonic, it's higher water concentration um, because there's a lower solute concentration. So it's always moving towards hypertonic. And because of this, we can't have water movement when it, when it comes to when it comes to organs and those things we donate in medical procedures. So we're going to have to keep it in an isotonic solution to prevent water loss. And because of um, this fact that we know about water movement, we can actually get data on water movement in hypertonic and hypotonic solutions. And from that, we're going to have to determine the osmolarity. But it's just like finding a range. So if it works with 0 0.1 mole, moles, but then not 0 0.5 moles, then it's somewhere in between that like that. Moving on, we're going to learn how our cells came to be. So this is another postulate of cell theory. Cells can only form by the division of pre-existing cells. So the first cells, then how did they come alive? Well, we actually have to agree that they came up from non-living non material. So this is uh, this is going to be also um, important. That's called There was also something called spontaneous generation, which is the idea that um, things came up from nothing else, so like rats could come out from dirty laundry, but that's not true. We've falsified that. Pasteur has falsified that with his 
flask experiment and that's really cool where he just had this nutrient broth boiled it so that bacteria was gone and then what he did was he blocked some of the flask he kept some of the others open and what he found what he found was there was no microbial growth on the closed flasks suggesting that there was no contamination leading to no life however the contaminated ones that were open to contamination actually led to um, microbial growth suggesting that there has to be uh, cells coming in for cells to uh, be there so cells come from pre-existing cells yeah and also the origin of new eukaryotic cells is endosymbiotic theory so that's the idea that um, endosymbiotes are symbiotes you can think of like the venom movies and how one thing goes into another and acts as a host so what happened was we suggest that mitochondria and chloroplast which are the examples we generally use for ib they were their own prokaryotic cells but what happened was they were eaten by larger prokaryotic cells and because of this they actually formed them um, um they actually stayed in those cells and became their own uh, the, the, an organelle of the larger prokaryote which um this organelle in this case would be membrane bound so we actually got endosymbiotic theory and eukaryotic cells 1.6 is all about cell division and mitosis so mitosis is the division of the nucleus so it's not the replication of cells you have to say division of nucleus and you form two identical daughter nuclei so there's no differentiation like in meiosis and chromosomes condense um, during mitosis sometimes you say in prophase one and this is all about supercoiling which we'll go into in topic seven i believe cytokinesis occurs after mitosis so this is the actual division of the cytoplasm and this is different in plants because plants have this cell plate whereas animals have this cleavage borer um, interface is a very active part of the cell cycle with many processes occurring in the nucleus and cytoplasm and so interface uh, there's the three different phases g1 s phase and g2 and there's also g0 which is specialization more on that in a non-summary video cyclins are these um, enzymes that are involved in controlling the cell cycles they bind to um, these proteins called cyclin dependent uh, cyclin dependent kinases or cdks and what they do is when they when cyclins bind to them they actually phosphorylate other enzymes that carry out different functions that control the mediation of the cell cycle right the six specific cycles you need to know in order are d e a b which i like to remember as dogs eat apples and bananas so there's cyclins a b c d and it's in that order Sorry, not, not A, B, C, D, D, E, A, B. Next, we need to know about mutagens, oncogenes, and metastasis. This, this is all about cancer. So mutagens are substances that can cause mutations. And what they do is they actually activate these genes called oncogenes, which are un inactive genes in our DNA. And this causes um, unstoppable replication or unmediated replication, which leads to formation of a tumor. Tumors can break off and circulate in blood or lymph and then go to other parts the body this is called metastasis and that's how you get secondary tumors so primary tumors become secondary tumors through metastasis correlation between smoking and incidence of cancer so the keyword here is correlation we need to know correlation does not equal causation so while smoking and if someone's if people higher smoking people have a high incidence incidence of cancer we cannot um, always deduce from a graph that it's a causal relationship we can we can only say correlation identification of the phases of meiosis in cells viewed through microscope or micrograph so this one is all about just thinking about prophase metaphase anaphase telophase what they look like so prophase you'd see um, one single nuclear region and nucleus re like region metaphase you have all the cells lining all the chromosomes aligning along the equator of the cell anaphase you have chromatid chromosomes being pulled apart and at telophase you have reformation of the nuclear membrane cytokinesis you have a cleavage for or a cell plate so that's how you do that and mitotic index is a calculation you have to do so that calculation can be done by dividing the cells in mitosis by the cells that are in total in, a, in an image and other than that that's going to be topic one all done in under 15 minutes so there we go we've done the syllabus guide if you guys want to see more videos like this where i go through a fast-paced revision of um, it's all, it's fun topics in IB biology. Um, please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below for any topics you want me to cover urgently. I'll be happy to do so. And yeah, so remember also this is for revision purposes. I'm not going to cover everything perfectly in the limited amount of time, but I'm trying to get you guys to recall these facts that we go through. And this is how we do some fast, efficient, last minute revisions. 
So anyways, see you guys in my next video.